You get sick at Disney. Yep. Oh boy. Good. Might as well come home with a souvenir. <laughs> Okay, that's the uh, page I'm on. Like, what page number is it? I don't know. Somewhere in the book. That's what the title is at the top. All right. For a certain period, a calculator manufacturer has fixed cost of $3,400 and variable cost of $17 for each item produced. Write the total cost equation. Okay? So the cost equation... Well, hi guys. Hi, we were just talking about you. Oh, you are. Yeah, I thought I offended you. That's why you hadn't been here. No. Okay. Libby, just be honest. It happens. <laughs> my bed was calling my name the last few days. Yeah, buddy. Well, we're on this page. And I'll go mark you guys here. What? <laughs> I feel really awkward. <laughs> I don't know why. Ew, go away. What did I do? No, it's me it's just being. It happens. <laughs> okay, so the cost equation. The cost equation is based on our notes. So the cost is going to be. The variable cost plus the fixed cost. Okay? So it says the manufacturer has a fixed cost of $3,400. So they're going to drop $3,400 no matter what to make these. And we'll say that this is called C at X. And then the variable cost is $17 per calculator. So that's our equation. That's it. And then they say... What will it cost to produce 200 units on a given time? So basically, the mathematical way is doing this. Oh, the fellows are here. Good to see you. So 17 times 200 is equal to 3,400. You do the math, so you get 3,400 plus 3,400. So it looks like to produce 200 of these calculators, it's going to cost you a whopping 6,800 doll hairs. Okay? So there was a kid who is in like Calc 3000 who wanted to drop in his calculus class and take this class. I guess. Uh, it's not terrible that it's I think you're just happy. Biggest con in the world. All right, does that make sense, friends? Oh, also, what is on Schoology, which is due on Monday at 11.59 in the PM? The quiz. And again, please don't go and submit it until after Friday. Like, you can totally start it, but one of the questions is going to be talking about the rent to own. And I have to go through my whole routine of acting like a sleazy salesman at a rent-to-own place for y'all. We will, I will be, you will know me as Rex. Yeah. He's the guy that does the double stamp. How you doing? From what, from what movie? Rent-to-own. Oh, is it like a video thing? No. Just... Just, just me. your own character? Just my character. Um, I won't be here Friday, so could you explain the problem? Sorry. <laughs> the what? The problem on the test, like in a different... I'll tell you time. what. I will record it, Perfect. and you can watch it. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's just me writing on this and my talking, so there's not... A, you don't see the visual two-finger two snap point. I'm going to miss out. So I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Problem number two says a calculator is sold for $34 per unit. Okay, $34 per unit. Write the total revenue function as an equation. Okay, so the revenue. So the revenue equation is, they say it's R at X 
The revenue equation was just simply is the price per unit, oh, can't squeeze it, per unit times the number of units. One of those has to be a variable. Okay? So the revenue, they tell us that this, uh, this calculator sold for $34 per unit, but we don't know how many units are sold, so you have just 34x. That's price per unit. It, at least it's trying to say that. I can't get it. My best is really only about 10% of everyone else's worst, so. Oh, no, that's not. I mean, I thought I was bright because my dad calls me son, but no. I missed out on that. It's okay. I'm not bright, though. <laughs> well, does your dad call you son? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what will the revenue be if we sold 300 units? So this is A's answer. So it's going to be R at 300. So that's going to be 34 times 300, which is some number, which if I multiplied it out, I would get 10,200. That would be my revenue. Okay? Pretty simple, huh? It's like, now that you did it, Stirrup, I get it. Didn't like the words originally. All right. Number three says, suppose a radio manufacturer has a total cost function given as 43x plus 1850, and the total revenue function is 80x. Okay. All right. So they have a cost function, they say, is this. And they say the revenue is this. These are just both given in the problem. So what is the profit? Well, you have to know that profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So on this particular problem, you would have uh, profit equals 80x minus 43x, bless you, plus 1850. And honestly, you could leave it like that. Some students might choose to say, well, I remember this distributed property from math. And that's fine. Oops. It should be a minus sign. Sorry. My math is horrible. My kids in Algebra 1 drained it. Drained my thought process. Okay, so I could do that, which would then say that my profit, my P at X, I guess it is, would be 37x minus 1850. All right, so that's that's the answer to A. And then what is the profit for 30 units? Okay, so if I want to find P at 30, I'm going to get 3,700 um, times 30. Minus 1850. Hey, I know you all your phones are away, but if not, get them out. Will someone go 37 times 30 for me, please? I don't know. I'm sorry. I wish I knew. Wait, 37 times 30? Um, 1,110. 1,110. And then would you subtract 1850 from that? Negative 740. Ooh, okay. All right. So, my friends, if I produced 700 and, or excuse me, if I produced, or if I sold 30 of my units, I am $740 broke. I took a loss. Okay. It's negative. Friends, I'm not sure. I know we're not small business owners or large business owners, but I'm pretty sure if uh, your business model is to lose $740, you're in the wrong business. Okay? And then 
they want to know how many radios need to be sold in order in order to get a profit. Okay? I need this. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. Apologize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump onto our friend Desmos. Y'all with me on this? What is this Desmos you all speak of? Well, it's a graphing operation. So what I'm going to do on Desmos is I'm going to graph the C at X and the R at X, and I'm going to figure out where they, excuse me, where they intersect each other. So Y equals. Okay, you found it. You're moving around. There we go. So I got y equals, go back and look at it, it was uh, 43x plus 1850. And then my other equation is y equals, don't remember, 80x. And then what we're doing is we're going to, let's darken this so we can all get a nice visual. I'm going to zoom out until I find my other equation. Oh, there we go. So the red equation, we want to see where it intersects the blue. Click on it. Click on it. Oh, there it is. Zero, zero. That's not what I want. I want up here. So if I were to sell 50 of these units, I have a profit, basically, or my break-even point is I would make $4,000. So that's my break-even point. So I need to make sure I'm selling 50 of these units each month. If that's the only thing I'm selling in my store, which is a pretty boring store. But if I sell 50 a month, I cover my cost. Okay? All right. And problem number four says a linear cost function is 5x plus 250. What is the marginal cost? What does it represent? Okay. So number four. We have this equation that's given to us. And they want the marginal cost. Marginal cost is 5. It's whatever goes with the variable, and that is the price per unit, whatever our unit is that we're selling. What is what is the C-intercept, which is basically Y-intercept? So the answer to B is 250, and that's the cost no matter what. Okay, that's our heating cost, our cooling cost, our water cost, our cost of our employees or whatever. That's what it's costing. Okay? And then find the difference in the cost between per doing 50 and 51 units. So the difference, if I made 50 units versus 51 units, I make $5 more for each extra unit sold. Okay. And what is the cost of producing one more item if 50 are currently being produced? What if 100 are being currently produced? Okay. So if I wanted to, what is the cost of producing one more unit if 50 are currently being produced? Well, that's $5. What if 100 units are being produced? Well, I'm going to plug 100 in right here. So that gives me 500 plus 250. So that's going to give me 750. All right. We're doing business. Hey, welcome to Business Calculus. All right. So, my friends, I would think that you could totally handle 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the next page. And we will then check those off. 
totally tomorrow, but and we'll go over them tomorrow as well. Sound like a deal? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm done.